As autumn 2005 turned to winter 2006, a group of community volunteers from Ellicottville, New York, came together with their camcorders and spent some time videotaping the people, places, and happenings of the Ellicottville area. They came back with some fascinating pictures and wonderful stories. Our town, Ellicottville. Broadcast of Our Town Ellicottville is made possible by the generous support of Agent Tina Dillon from Hunt Real Estate in Ellicottville, New York, specializing in vacation properties for enjoyment, investment, or both. Information available at HuntGreatVacations.com. Dina's Inspired American Cuisine with cowboy chic decor, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the Ellicottville Brewing Company, distinct craft beers and classic fare in a relaxing atmosphere. Dina's and the Ellicottville Brewing Company, culinary destinations in the heart of Ellicottville, and by the members of WNED. Thank you. My name is Wendy O'Neill and I chose skiing as my topic because um, I've grown in skiing, met many friends, and became later in my life a real estate broker that dealt with skiers. In 1936, Doc Northrup started with a, I believe it was a rope tow, and by 1938, Fish Hill Ski Club started, and it kind of grew from there. There were people coming here from Cleveland and Pittsburgh and Buffalo area. Before you knew it, all of a sudden, the skiing in our area was born. I went to both Holiday Valley Ski Resort and Hollymont Ski Resort because uh, Ellicottville is lucky enough to have two resorts in one town. The first thing I wanted to try and relay to people is that skiing is for everyone. It doesn't matter how old you are. So you'll see where I've shot a picture of little children and adult skiers as well, and they're all beginners. I was surprised by one instructor at how many children he had in his class, and they were all very young, and how well they listened. They were so good at what they did. They were just ready to go. They wanted to get down the hill and chase each other, and they were having fun. I did get a shot of a gentleman going up the rope toe for the beginner slope. That gentleman was probably in his 70s, and he was a beginner. There's a great adult ski program at Holiday Valley. So I think anyone of any age really could come here and start skiing, as long as you're in fairly good health. I wanted to show people that getting on the lift is a very safe thing. In the one lift shot I had, there are three attendants there helping the people on the lift. Mardi Gras is the longest slope at Holiday Valley. Usually you can pick people up of all different levels of skiing. So you'll see people on that slope that are snow plowing, which would be a beginning type of skiing and up to intermediate. And then I went to Cindy's slope and started shooting there. And I ended up with some snowboarders and more advanced skiers there. I wanted to show the groups that come here from all over. They come in by bus. I shot one of the groups from Cleveland coming here, getting their tickets and the process to get their boots, uh, pick up their skis. It's not just a sport for single people or children, it's a family sport as well. So I did get one family who had just shown up for skiing and they were sitting around a table and getting ready to go. Yodler is a more advanced slope. Hopefully I captured the different level of skiing that you would see on Yodler with a more advanced skier. There was a border crossing competition here at the valley. Snowboarders, rather than coming down the hill one at a time, come down three and four at a time. It's pretty interesting. I, I would never attempt it myself. <laughs> I think skiing is a lot safer than that. At Hollymont, I drove up and captured a picture of a skiing sculpture. I thought it was kind of humorous, so I wanted to grab a picture of that as well. Hollymont is the largest private ski resort in North America. They do have public skiing during the week there. On weekends, it's usually members and their guests only at Hollymont. There's some very good advanced skiing. 
as well as beginner skiing, which you'll see on the sunset slope, the beginners that are coming down that slope with their instructor. I did capture a father and son getting ready to ski. They had come out to the slope and they were getting ready to go and captured the other skiers coming down by them. I think it pretty much is a lot of the lifeblood of this area. Without the skiing here, Ellicottville would probably be a quiet, rural little farm town like it used to be years and years ago, which is nothing wrong with that. But the skiing certainly changed things here. Ellicottville is a very friendly place, you know, a skier friendly place. There's no reason to sit inside all winter long. I would like to encourage more people to get out there and ski because it really isn't that difficult. Hi, my name is um, Terry Lakata Bronstein and I live in Ellicottville, New York. And my topic was storefronts of Ellicottville. Ellicottville is a town of variety, not only in what they have to offer, but the people and each and every store owner brings their own, their own special feeling to their particular stores and um, contribute to the variety and the beauty of the town. Earth Arts I've been familiar with for many years. It's, um, it's got anything you can um, imagine from like all over the world, distinctive glassware and jewelry and she has a selection of odd musical instruments that you could possibly buy for somebody that is into the music field. The barn, yes, it's a family style restaurant. It's got a wide variety of menu. Coolings is run and owned by two sisters with the last name of Coolings. And this shop reminds me of an old time ice cream shop. They also sell this um, it's really cool. It's a cooling bar, and it's got ice cream inside with chocolate on the outside, and, and it's on a stick. Kasu, um, again, it's a wonderful store for shopping for that person that has everything, and um, beautiful gifts from all over, and her jewelry selections, and big stuffed animals of every sort, and it's a charming place to be in. Watson's Chocolate. Watson has many locations and they have wonderful gift ideas. Primarily it's a, a, ch it's a, a chocolate shop. And they gift wrap in there, beautiful gift wrap. And um, they also sell some coffees in there. Pathway books, You've got out of print books, books that you can't find at the library. When you think about it, you can give somebody a book for a gift and he wraps in this old type of paper. And uh, you can sit in there and read and. It's um, got a great variety of different topics of books. Gato Gato amazes me because their displays are so unique. And you walk in and you just gawk over each display. The owner goes to Indonesia and buys the crafts from the local people and brings them back. There's a toy store called Shh, and it's got toys of every sort, hand puppets, all sorts of toy books on toys for, for children and animals, and he also has a beautiful selection of estate jewelry. You wouldn't think of that in a toy store, but he does have it there. A touch of Ellicottville. You could buy anything in there with logo on it of Ellicottville. Then Monty's gallery is, is downstairs, and Monty, he's got such a flair for art. He's a photographer, and, and um, he also does specialized framing and artwork. He also has a dog by the name of Blue, and Blue is a rescued collie, and he has raised $11,000 for the emergency pet care. I'd have to say come to Ellicottville. It's got a lot to offer, and versatility in the arts, in the sports, in the fine dining, and just in general, um, a place where you can just let yourself go and be the kind of person that you are. I'm Chad Neal and my topic was the nightlife of Ellicottville. It's a very large part of Ellicottville, I think. I play ski and uh, even have to golf in the summertime. And, uh, it's a good, there's lots of bars in Ellicottville compared to the size. <laughs> nightlife is my life. I'm a bartender, I work at night. I see lots of things. I started at the bar I work at Madigan's. 
on a Thursday night. Not a lot of people were in town. But ended up being a lot of people in town that night. <laughs> I got out, people playing pool and drinking and dancing, and the bartender serving drinks. Thursday before New Year's, it was really busy. I got a party squad on Thursday night to Madigan's. The band was upstairs. It was uh, slow for me at the time, so I went up and shot them setting up. I did some shots of the crowd as it grew. But uh, on Thursday nights in the winter, they always play downstairs, which kind of like packs the bar and everyone loves it. Madigan's are closing. <laughs> This is the end of the night at Madigan's. I counted some tips at the end of the night when I was working and recording at the same time. So I was like, oh, let me get some shot of the money that we made tonight. I got a lot of shooting of the winter time when it's packed and busy and the bands are playing. On Monday nights, it's Mondo Monday. That's at uh, Double Diamond. A couple of guys, locals, that play guitar and bass and harmonica and sing and have a good time. They've got a good repertoire. You guys want to play some tunes? Sure. Locals know them a lot. They pick on the crowd and sing their own songs. And the covers their own ways. They play all night. And it makes, they make it fun. I did mostly live music nights at the bars that I went to. And uh, every Wednesday there's Joe Wagner at Gin Mill. Dallas built a fun town. It's a tourist town, and that's what we're here for. We're here to have fun and show you guys a good time. My name is Lynn Tim, and I chose the topic of bed and breakfasts. We live a life of constant production, constant speed. And B&Bs offer a unique opportunity, I think, for people to settle down and be still. I love the Black Dog Lodge. They're in the middle of the woods and they have beautiful gardens and, and a pond out in front. In the backyard there are waterfalls and so you hear that constant stream of water. And all of their rooms overlook woods. And each one of the rooms has its own name and its own personality. The common room is so warm and, and inviting. And everywhere you look outdoors, it's, it's a painting. It's just gorgeous. The Jefferson Inn is located in the village. Um, and it has a beautiful old wraparound porch. Um, there's a hot tub out in <laughs> their side patio. So you can relax out there and still kind of have a little bit of a view of the downtown without being without being seen yourself. So it's a little less fancy in its setting, but it's, it's very homey. The Sugar Pine Lodge, you can tell these people love what they do as far as presenting a beautiful space. The dining area is, is lovely and overlooks, you know, the back hills of Ellicottville. The rooms are elegant. They're just elegant. They have, it, the bathrooms have the beautiful old pedestal types of sinks. The, the one um, bordello room that they, you have to like step up on a ladder to get up onto the bed. It's really, it's really very elegant, you know. They have four post beds and it's very cozy. I, w I would live there. <laughs> Adams Corners is, is um, kind of a quieter bed and breakfast, but they're in a residential area. So you really get a feeling of being, you know, home in a neighborhood. And all of the rooms are very different, um, but nice, clean. Um, they have very simple rooms that share a bathroom, and then they have uh, rooms that probably would be comfortable in the Poconos with the the deep jacuzzi <laughs> tubs in the room. It's quiet. That's, that's the theme. All of these places have a peace and quiet available to them that uh, you don't have that in a hotel. You don't hear your neighbors. It's nice. The Ilex Inn. Um, they're located on 219, a comfortable walk uh, into the village. The common room downstairs is, is, is lovely and quiet and looks out 
onto trees. The upstairs has a common room also, a small sitting room that also looks out onto trees. The owners are very into the cooking thing. You can tell that, you know, that's, that's their passion. Ellicottville isn't just about skiing and partying. Ellicottville has so much more to offer in terms of getting away from the rat race. I moved here from Southern California and it took a while for me to slow down enough to appreciate what was here and I love it now and I won't leave. Welcome to the Nananar region, the jewel in the crown of Ellicottville. Open every day of the year, free of charge, eight acres of absolute serenity and tranquility. Come and visit us. Uh, my name is Paul Kingston and the topic I chose is the Nanana Arboretum. It has um, over 200 trees and shrubs, a Japanese uh, stone garden. That's a, uh, a replica of a garden that was designed in Kyoto, Japan over 800 years ago. It also has a herb garden and a perennial border and a pond which we call Lake Nipponica and a Japanese bridge. I call it the jewel in the crown of Ellicottville. It uh, came into existence in about 1968. It was designed by John Plotz and uh, he passed away just a few years ago. He was a wonderful man, um, a gentle giant he was called. He was a huge man. He knew more about trees than God. He envisioned an arboretum. Um, the land was donated by Mr. and Mrs. William Nannan. We have tours, uh, bus tours, senior citizens, and there are people from uh, Australia, Europe, all over the world. It's absolutely amazing. Ken Brown, who uh, lives in the village, started a group of uh, volunteers called the Arboteers. Um, they have um, adopted a tree or a shrub or an area and they, each person does his own little bit and it's made a terrific difference. It really is uh, eight acres of tranquility. It doesn't matter where you go, you are surrounded by beauty and um, some beautiful people too. It is, uh, I think, one of the happiest moves that I made in my life was to end up living full time in Ellicottville. I'm Gwen Bush and my topic was other sporting events or other things to do other than alpine skiing. Most people when they think of Ellicottville they think of downhill skiing but um, there's a lot of other things to do here such as cross-country skiing and uh, snowshoeing which are really wonderful outdoor activities. You can do it with a whole family. Cross-country skiing and snowshoeing require very little learning curve. Basically if you can walk you can go snowshoeing. You need six inches of snow, and there's no limit to how deep the snow is with snowshoeing. You can just go. You can go for a little circle walk, or you can go for miles and miles into the deep woods, and it's really beautiful and peaceful. It's a great way to enjoy things with your family or friends, or even just quiet time by yourself. Good, how are you? Good, it's a beautiful day. It is a beautiful That's day. Snowmobiling out on the state land, which is right behind Holiday Valley and Halima, there are quite a few trails there. It's very fun family activity and a lot of people have groups of friends that go out every Friday night and they do a tour from village to village all over this uh, southern trail. There's a trail out by Hollymont that is a wonderful trail and they groom it and it's open to the public. It's the White Trail and it's really beautiful out there and that's where people like to go. It's kind of a climb up but once you get on the top it's flat and nice. Snowshoeing is a little easier than cross-country skiing because it's just basically walking. Where cross-country skiing, there's a little bit of skill required. Not much, certainly not as much as with downhill skiing. It's kind of a glide walk. And it's great exercise, so a lot of people have picked that up to um, stay in shape throughout the winter. 
sometimes with downhill skiing you get cold, but with uh, cross-country skiing or snowshoeing, you can be out there in really cold weather and keep nice and warm and, and really enjoy the outside. It's a great way to experience the woods. In the past 10 years, I would say it's definitely grown in popularity, snowshoeing and cross-country skiing. A lot of people will go downhill skiing in the morning and then they'll go home and go for a snowshoe. I like the fact that I can walk out my door and I can go do some kind of exciting activity in nature and, and just, I don't have to get in a car. I can just walk down the street. We live here in western New York and the winter comes and people dread it. They can't wait for it to be over. But if you buy yourself a pair of snowshoes or rent them and just go out to see if you even like it, you can really appreciate being outside in the winter. It actually makes you look forward to snow. It makes you look forward to the cold. It makes the seasons nice. My name is Liz Boberg. And the topic that I have chosen is, why are you here? Why did you choose Ellicottville to be your permanent home? I came here from Pittsburgh area, and I got my first job in Ellicottville in 1987. And I've been here ever since. And throughout that, I have met so many people that have done the same thing. Michael and Nancy Gershio. Their story is a, um, one that kind of travels throughout this whole line. We're from Buffalo, <clears throat> and we came here because initially because of the skiing. And um, I've taught skiing at Holiday Valley for 30 years. I love the connection with nature. And I'm a painter, and all of my oils and watercolors are inspired by nature. Ed and Jean Clara Moe, they are from Guelph, Ontario, and they had an opportunity to purchase a bar and restaurant here in town. We, uh, we were looking for something to do, something to do for the rest of our lives, and we found the gin mill became available, and we were very excited about it. So we said, you know what, we can do it, and um, we've never looked back. It's been wonderful ever since. The community is it's a, just a fabulous place to live. The, uh, the school system is, is uh, second to none. Uh, the, uh, the restaurants, the nightlife, uh, it's, just, it, it's just an incredible village to live in, village and town. Not to mention it's a world-class ski area. Kim and Miguel Ascarate are two people that are so widely known in this area. Miguel came to us uh, from friends from Buffalo, but he is from San Sebastian, Spain. And he's been involved with the race team and still is to this day. And Kim, who is from the Jamestown area, also worked here at Holiday Valley. That's how they met and had an opportunity to open up a business downtown also. Well, I grew up skiing here. My parents always had a ski house here, so Ellicottville's always been my second home. I just like the small town atmosphere of it. Um, you know, there's a lot of good people here. There's an interesting mix of people here. And I just thought it was a good place to settle down and raise a family. Margaret and Gary Kin are also a poignant couple that have changed their whole lives by coming to Ellicottville. They both worked at the Cleveland Clinic for many years. Well, we bought a vacation home in Ellicottville and came 16 years in a row with our daughters, raised them here in Ellicottville, skiing on the freestyle team, and uh, our social life started to revolve around Ellicottville and not Cleveland. They had an opportunity to buy a bed and breakfast here in town, and the Ilex Inn came up for sale, and they just jumped on it. We love the community. We love the area and uh, it's very peaceful here. Evan and Joyce Evans, very wonderful people in town, always involved in so many of the different things that go on as well. We used to live in Gowanda, New York, uh, south of Buffalo, 
And uh, we lived and worked there for a number of years, and we decided that we would look for another community to live in. And because we were skiing uh, at the time, and we were very interested in skiing, we decided to come to Ellicottville. We like living in Ellicottville because of the sense of community, the uh, caring of the individuals in the community. Uh, when we moved here, our girls were in high school, and the parents were very involved with the lives of their children, uh, the sports, the band, academics, and it has pro proven to be very worthwhile. Marcy and Ollie Hazard have come from the south towns of Buffalo. And I just always wanted to live here when this Hollymount came available. I was able to join and get a lot and a membership for $685 that I met Marcy. We were married in 65 and in 66 we started bringing the kids and the rest is history. I like the people and the friendships that we have here. We have some very close friendships and of course I love the scenery, the skiing, the rural atmosphere and a neat little town to hang out in. I'm Laura Sally, and I did the holistic community. Uh, there's an Ashtanga yoga uh, that goes on on Monday and Wednesday evenings. This is a, a little bit more of an advanced group and we sh I showed the primary series which is a system in the Ashtanga uh, yoga practice. And bend your knees if you need to. And then exhale, release your fingers are spread wide. Your thumb and middle finger on the mat. Four. And five. With the inhale, draw yourself up. Take your feet parallel. Nature's Remedy is the health food, health uh, store in town. They have vitamins. They also have um, health and beauty products. Uh, for, you know, as far as bath salts, and they do a whole section on aromatherapy. They offer um, a small section on food, um, which is, their finding is expanding as more people turn on to sort of an alternative organic lifestyle. They offer education, uh, different classes, iridology, different um, tongue tests, different eye tests. They also have a full section of literature, lots of books, and their own printouts to offer the community. Then I went to um, Earthworn Body. Their whole feel is all natural health, and they use all natural products. They're very hands-on, they're very uh, right down to their, their linens and all that sort of thing. They use all natural, even in the environment, that the environment is very clean and pure. The Oasis Day Spa um, is pretty new. It opened about a year ago. Um, and it's another aspect to the holistic community. If someone was receiving a pedicure and you know, just having their daily gossip sort of talk. Um, and then one of the other rooms I went into was a massage room. And they have a number of uh, registered um, practitioners and it's, it was just a beautiful experience walking in there. I had never been in their building. I think the real key thing that I found within each of these places is that sense of interwovenness of our community and then of the holistic community. When I went to my yoga class, which was the Ashtanga yoga, um, one of the fellow students in that class was we were getting ready for class and someone else walked in and she has a, a local organic farm and he said to her I just came from your house didn't I and it was just that real warm family community feel to to uh, the class and that everyone ends up knowing one another in our community and in a you know organic healthful way My name is Joe Clark and I chose to do uh, the brewing process of craft beers because um, I do run the Ellicottville Brewing Company and I figured uh, it would be a good topic since we are the only microbrewery in Ellicottville. You get to go in and see an actual brew pub and our brewers are actually making the beer so it's a nice little thing to sit and watch happen. The day that I did the shooting we were making our Two Brothers Pale Ale which is one of our most popular beers and we have been making that ever since the first brew 
at the Alcoa Brewing Company. The ingredients we start with are base barley out of our silo, and then we add hops for flavor. And the hops we use depend on, on the style of beer we're making. And then we use malts to give our beers our colors and their flavors. We have a grain silo outside in the back of the restaurant that holds about 20,000 pounds of our base grain that we start every beer with. From there, the grain is taken through an auger into a tube that feeds it into the brewery to a malt mill, which dehusks the grain and exposes the starch that we need. And from there, it is sent up to our, what we call a mash tun. We uh, rinse all the grain and we fill it with water to expose the starch and pull the starch out of the grain. Our brewer likes to do what he's called a, a hot air um, aeration process for when we're rinsing the wort. He takes his paddle and he puts it right above where the, the sprinkler is that provides the water on the malt so that it frees up a little bit more of the air into the water and it, it spreads out on the malt to give it a little bit more flavor and draw the wort out a little bit better. From there the wort is rinsed and cleaned and transferred to our kettle which heats the beer to around 200 degrees to kill all the enzyme activity and to make the sugars turn the starches. From the kettle we transfer the beer through a heat exchanger which takes the beer from 200 degrees down to around 65 degrees to uh, prevent the yeast from dying so that the yeast can interact with the sugars in the fermenter. The whole process of making the beer from grain to uh, wort is uh, probably about four and a half to five hours which is, seems like a short time. That's not the most important part. The fermenting stage is where it takes the time. And whether the beer is an ale or a lager it depends on how long it sits in the fermenters for. Ales take about two weeks and lagers take anywhere from four to six weeks to, uh, to ferment. After the beer is done with the fermenting, we send it through a, a filter that takes all the yeast out so it clarifies the beer. And then we send it into our serving tanks. And from the tanks, it goes directly to the tap towers at the bar and right to uh, the customer. Our microbrewery beers have a lot of different flavors, a lot of different colors, a lot of different tastes. Um, microbrew beers, they have different concentrations of alcohol. You have a little bit freer range with the style of beers that you can make. Um, as compared to like a Budweiser, where mainstream beers are pretty much you're just getting your pilsners. There's really no comparison at all to what we make and to what the uh, big brewing companies make. It's a very scientific field. There's a lot of math and numbers that go into it. We put all of our employees through a, a brewing school so everyone knows how the beer process is done and how it's made so we can inform our customers. I hope that people learn that the brewing process, how intricate it is and, and the relationship the brewer has with his beer, um, it's kind of like his baby, if you will. And we hope that it also brings uh, people into our town to come and, and see our brewery and actually sit and watch the process and ask questions and go for a tour and, and uh, definitely try our beer. Watch where you're going. Look where you're going. My name is Billy Bacon. I'm a professional snowboarder. Well, I should say retired professional snowboarder, and I, and I now live here in Ellicottville. Um, so I chose snowboarding as, as my topic. Whoa, buddy. I have a four-year-old who immediately wanted to snowboard because daddy snowboards. Do the wiggle hop. Ah. Oh. As early as three and four years old, kids are snowboarding these days. It's quite amazing how quickly they can pick up a sport like this. I went out and shot a new trail that they had opened up for snowboarding called Fiddler's Elbow. We built some new rail slide boxes and, uh, and rail slides. It's a box that allows the snowboarder to get up on it and slide off. Here at Holiday Valley, we were allowed to build these features um, in the summertime, haul them out here in the wintertime. That's some of the stuff I shot, people putting together these rail slides and boxes. If you come out here on any typical Friday night, you'll find hundreds of kids um, from the surrounding areas and the tune of 80 busloads will come to Holiday Valley in, in Ellicottville to use these train features. We're building uh, safe features and it's fun to watch. You know, these kids just really thrive on it. What's going on? We've put on a number of contests here at Holiday Valley. We've seen riders from out west competing against our local uh, heroes. It's amazing to see that in the east, because these kids learn on the ice and in, and in the powder, that we have some of the strongest riders. We have a combination of jumps and rails 
where the riders have to negotiate and perform a couple of tricks on rails as well as uh, you know some aerial maneuvers. To know that any of these kids out here could be one of these next superstars and they've learned the jumps that I've built, I really get a lot of satisfaction out of that. All right, what's up? My name is Blair Russett. I'm a pro snowboarder. I grew up in Holiday Valley and uh, was able to go out west and uh, ride some serious mountains. I still come back here during the holidays and I'm really excited the way that Holiday Valley has kept up with the times. It's really such a quaint, beautiful place to ride and I'm happy to be back. They didn't always allow snowboarding here in Ellicottville. It wasn't until the early 90s that they allowed us to use all the lifts. We've had to strive hard to uh, gain acceptance from others uh, in the ski industry. We've always been the, the underdogs. It's nice to provide the footage, the proof, if you will, that uh, we can be professionals and we can excel to great um, heights uh, as athletes. Snowboarders have always bonded together in a tribe a group of people like the Lost Boys always looking to go have fun and, and, and fly. Snowboarding's here to stay. With the help of the local ski areas, we'll keep growing and progressing as a sport. Whoa! What are you going to do? We'll see where we can take it. My name is Annie Widger. My name is Amy Detine, and we're part of our equestrian community in Ellicottville, which has over 20 horse barns and um, horse owners and facilities. We have a lot of new horse owners that have found their way to Ellicottville. Annette Topkin is a new resident. She's from the Netherlands, and her barn, the Dutch dressage barn, is specializing in training and lessons, uh, as well as clinics um, in the dressage area of riding. And the horse that we were able to watch her ride was um, a 10-year-old mare that had actually been in the Paralympics in Greece and uh, placed fourth. And what a, an amazing, you see these dressage horses, they just dance and float. It's beautiful to watch. Kinship with horses with Gail Hazer, and she specializes in um, English riding and training horses. Uh, the Point Break Farm was with Lisa Williams, and she's one of our trainers that's um, currently building the new barn. And she specializes also in natural horsemanship training. And she's teaching the horse to stop and start. And she's doing that really by using her dynamics and what another horse would use to move another horse in the herd around with. Gone are the days when they did the breaking of horses when you beat them into submission and it's a more gentle, nicer uh, communication type atmosphere between horse and trainer or horse and rider. You get more out of your horse because of that. Horses have personalities just like people do and the herd dynamics are pretty intense. You can have, if you can think of everyone that you knew in high school, there's a horse that fits that category of person. It's, it's amazing. Goats are great with horse herd. He goes out with the horses. He brings the horses in in the morning when I call them. He runs down and they're all following this small little goat. It's a riot. And the goat actually thinks it's a horse. Horses are a lot of work. It's passion, and I think you'll find that most horse owners are pretty diligent. One of the things that uh, always strikes me, especially in the Ellicottville community, is the support network that you have among horse owners. And everyone supports one another, so it's like a rotation almost. I'm going away for a few days. Can you help me with chores? And vice versa, and everybody supports one another that way. Make them a movie star, and they get temperament. 
Kim Kidd is a local farrier. He serves the Ellicottville community, um, mostly doing most of the shoe, shoeing in Ellicottville. He's an expert in balance so that all four of their legs are balanced properly because horses can also become lame very easily. Uh, so it's a, it is a real science. Annie's horse rides take place on trails around her barn. We also have um, a huge network of trails. We have thousands of acres of state land in the area that have groomed and marked trails for equestrian people. Mansfield Coach and Cutter, um, she has draft horses. So Dawn was nice enough to get everything set up for us and we were able to film that whole process of her getting a horse ready for a buggy ride, which is a lot more involved than people would realize. Yeah, he's pretty laid back. We're coloring him. We're very gifted that we have such a wonderful vacation area. I think there's so much more to Alicaville that so many people still don't see. They still think we roll our sidewalks up in April and go away somewhere. <laughs> Just spreading the passion of horses, I think, is wonderful. They use horses um, in one of our neighboring communities with um, troubled youth. Horses can be like really good medicine, and I think everyone should learn about that. Uh, my name is Brant Davis. My company is Gone Wild Creations, and our topic is craftsmen. We build antler chandeliers and rustic furniture for private homes and hotels all over the country. You know, every spring the animals shed their antler and then we usually make a trip out west and we have different people that go out and collect them in the woods and then we bring piles of them back into our studio and we sort through everything and try and find similar pieces that we think will fit well together and the rest of it gets cut up into small pieces and shipped over to Southeast Asia where they believe it's an aphrodisiac. I'm not quite sure of that one. Oh, look at this one. kind of like Mother Nature's jigsaw puzzle. Because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what the final product's going to be. That yeah. actually worked out really nice. <laughs> you just keep sorting through, sorting through pieces that you think might fit well together and then you take them over to the work table, start assembling things and then you figure out how you're going to wire it and where all the lights are going to go and just kind of work from the bottom up. Two favorite times. One, when you're finished with the project and you sit, you sit back and you put your feet up on the work table and you look at it and you're like, well, I hope the client likes it. And the second time, watching the expression on the person's face, the first time that they walk into the room where, you know, whatever you built is there. And they're just like, that's, they're completely blown away. That's the best. No matter how many hours you spend on something, the, way, the reason I keep doing it is just for the reaction and the appreciation that you get from the client at the end. I like that. It's fun teaching them. I try not to teach too much because I want the people that work for me to develop their own, you know, their own style and their own way of doing things. Each piece will get anywhere between three and five lag screws. Then everything gets reset. All the holes get filled with an industrial compound and then we use dental tools to grind it back to match the antler. And then we go through it and we run all the wire through the center of the antler all the way around and out to the top. So the finished product, you'll never find a wire, you'll never find a fastener. Yeah, I could move to the Adirondacks, I could live in Lake Placid and, and have, a, have to have a workshop that's 30 minutes outside of town versus, you know, three blocks from your house. You know, there's a lot of really, really good people living this, you know, live in this small village. and. Um, now, there's a lot of, lot of people here that are doing you know, really cool things and really good work. My name is Sarah Maloney. My name is Dennis Baldwin and we chose to do cycling in the Ellicottville area. I grew up near Ellicottville and I usually only came down for a special trip to go skiing and that's really all I ever knew about Ellicottville until two years ago when I started mountain biking. I wanted to show this side of Ellicottville that is new to me. 
it's a strong area for mountain biking. There's a huge network of single track mountain bike trails in the area for intermediate to advanced. Uh, it's all built and maintained by a club called Line Nimbo, which is uh, the Western New York Mountain Biking Association. We rode a trail called the Rim Trail, which is up by Little Rock City, and this is an area that's got big rock formations that's really fun to ride at. I manage the shop in town and you know we can do guided rides and stuff like that because it is kind of hard to just go out in the middle of the woods and find your way around if you're not familiar with the area. You can always find a guide or just somebody to ride with and you know of all different levels. I didn't want to just show the experts out there on the challenging train. Um, I did a little single track that it was easier. Single track is the real narrow um, path through the woods that's unique to mountain biking. And I also showed at the top of Holly Mountain Holiday Valley, there's a really beautiful pond. And there's some simpler trails that are wide and open and relatively flat. So I showed some of the other terrain that pretty much anyone that's comfortable on a bike could, could do those kind of terrain. Well, we had a local friend, Bicycle Bill, who was very well known in the community, and he passed away um, early last spring. So. His memorial service was held at the Nanam Arboretum, which was really beautiful. And I left a bike up against the altar where they'd had his service and just kind of paused for a minute just, just to remember him. I like it, it's pretty small, so the road riding extends like kind of through the whole county. Uh, the roads around here actually have a, a really big shoulder on, on the side of the road, so it's pretty good for riding on the road. Uh, there's a lot of challenging hills that, that are right in the area. People from out west and, you know, people that do magazine articles and they come and road here and say, I mean, this is some of the best that they've, that they've rode. I just think it's a good idea to show people that are into cycling that if you're into just a half hour ride to get some exercise or if you're in a high level competition, it all happens in Alakaville and it's a great place with beautiful scenery and just a great area to come and have some fun and enjoy the outdoors. Hi, I'm Joe DePasquale and I've uh, lived in Ellicottville for quite a few years now, a transplant from Buffalo. And my topic is the Ellicottville Ski Club. I've been a member of the Ellicottville Ski Club since 1960 and I'm one of the younger members. <laughs> It's the second oldest ski club in the United States of America. It's a great place to raise your children. You make friends that last longer than the ski season. Well, if you drive up Holiday Valley Road and you go by the main chalet, before you get to the Yodler, which is the middle chalet, we're on the left at the bottom of a run called Edelweiss. It was just an average day at the ski club. A lot of children, a lot of uh, grandparents and parents. Uh, we eat lunch there every ski day. Everybody brings a picnic basket. You, know, you bring your wine and your cheese and your sandwiches, and we have grills up there. I think the Ellicottville Ski Club was very important in starting the whole ski industry down here. This club building was built in 1960. However, the, uh, the club goes back to 1938 founded by Bob Stubbs, who was the first general manager of the Valley, and Dr. Wilbur Northrup and Bob Seamer. Back in 38, uh, they used to ski at Greer Hill, and then finally uh, someone had the foresight to buy up all of this land that Holiday Valley now sits on and decided to form a corporation. Although the Ellicottville Ski Club has no connection financially with Holiday Valley or Winsome Corporation, uh, they let us buy a round acre here. Everything is spread up around us. We are uh, within ski distance of everything here. We have children that are children of children from the Ellicottville Ski Club. Now we're going into three generations and sometimes four generations. Kids who were brought up there when they were six weeks old and now they're in their 40s. There's a waiting list and it's not because we're snooty. It's because we're limited in the parking spaces. So the membership 
depends on how much parking we have. <laughs> and let's not a couple of here. just a bunch of people having a good time from Cleveland, from Pittsburgh, from Toronto, from Buffalo. Every weekend, you're with family. We have theme parties every Saturday night. They used to do them at the Lincoln Hotel, and for some reason, everybody thought it was funny to wear costumes or wear Hawaiian things in the middle of the winter. Having fun and a bunch of people with the same likes and dislikes. You know, the people who ski like to do other things also, and they're always a little bit on the edge. And that's what makes it so great. <laughs>
broadcast of Our Town Ellicottville is made possible by the generous support of Agent Tina Dillon from Hunt Real Estate in Ellicottville, New York, specializing in vacation properties for enjoyment, investment, or both. Information available at HuntGreatVacations.com. Dina's Inspired American Cuisine with cowboy chic decor, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the Ellicottville Brewing Company, distinct craft beers and classic fare in a relaxing atmosphere. Dina's and the Ellicottville Brewing Company, culinary destinations in the heart of Ellicottville. And by the members of WNED. Thank you.